People in Burundi's capital Bujumbura run from their homes, taking with them only what they can carry in their arms or what they can stuff into a cart. We are fleeing because we have heard about the president's directive and I'm scared they are going to call us fighters. This fear is caused by what the leadership said. We are very scared and worried because they might come down on us with all the military might. That is why people are running away. President Pierre Kurunziza has issued an ultimatum. All illegal weapons should be handed in by Friday. But many fear it will only push Burundi closer to civil war. And rights groups have warned against what they call hardline language coming from officials. When senior government officials are using terms like exterminate and pulverize those who are not worthy to live, and when members of the opposition in the dark of night are throwing grenades at police officers, this is what brings us to the brink. We need to pull back from that. President Kurunziza won a controversial third term in July. His opponents said it was against the constitution, but a special court supported him because he was picked by parliament for his first term, not voted in by the people. Protests and fighting followed and got worse over the following months. Now the United Nations and a group which monitors global conflict say the situation in Burundi is deteriorating. The International Crisis Group says the army has the potential to stop the fighting, but it warns the military is fractured and near breaking point. Some say Burundi's future may lie with countries close by. We think those neighbours have to be a crucial part of sending immediate signals to both sides in the next 48 hours to pull back from the brink so that we don't see this weekend this ultimatum from the president as a trigger uh, to go to mass violence. The United Nations Security Council will meet on Monday to discuss the situation in Burundi. And as President Kurunziza's deadline approaches, many people are packing what they can and leaving. Rob Matheson, Al Jazeera.